Hi guys, thank you for joining me on my channel Jesus Hates Narcs, where I want to discuss the topic of narcissism, especially covert narcissism, the Bible, psychopaths, divorce, Christian marriage, marriage in the Lord, separation, remarriage, um, what else? Heresies in Christianity, and where I want to try to uh, reconnect you to your savior because after all he is the one that bought the church with his own blood right god bought us we are precious in god's eyes and if you are a survivor a victim of narcissistic abuse you know what it means to hit rock bottom right when my narcissist i discarded him i had to um, but in fact, behind my back, he was discarding me long before I had a chance to even realize what I was dealing with. So, um, if this is you, I would, um, like to encourage you to stay here because, uh, I'm here to tell you it's been three months since this happened. I hit rock bottom. I was very suicidal, all, although I am a Christian and I do have an eternal hope but when when you've been married to to a master manipulator your mind has been has been so manipulated and trauma bonded that you gave your whole attention and your energy to this narcissist you have been used and abused in in so many ways and this is what we are going to be addressing here on this channel i hope that you will join the discussion. I hope that you will comment and share your, your story because this is also very important for your healing, uh, realizing that you have been abused and, and uh, vocalizing it. You know, there are great Facebook groups that can help you. I created one myself. It's a private Facebook group, but uh, we still have no members because the channel is new and I'm dealing with health issues myself. So I'm dealing also with CPTSD, but I'm telling myself, you know what? It's not about me. It's the topic is so important that I need to talk about it. And um, I'm very camera shy. I never practiced, you know, recording myself. So it's very cringy for me to even, to even watch myself talk to you right now, but I hope it's going to get better. And I hope that you can get something out of this channel if it can help you help just one abused person and one Christian out there who is stuck in, in such a one-sided fake marriage in the Lord, which it is not. Um, but <clears throat> then uh, my goal is accomplished. But, um, you know, the topic of narcissism is, is a booming topic and the Bible also confirms that because uh, thousands of years ago, um, the predictions for the end times in which we live, and I'm not, I'm not a cultist, I do not belong to any organization, I do not belong to any church, uh, the Bible says that believers are the church, right, so we are the temple of God. And uh, we don't need nobody to teach us, but, um, you know, a lot of us are not familiar with the Bible beat because they're distracted too much with this world. So maybe this is going to get you back on track, you know, to just listen and to be uh, connected um, uh, to your savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, to the written word of God which is the Bible. And I would suggest that you take my word for it. There's a lot of mistakes in the modern versions. And um, these are facts. This is not my opinion. If you just go into the topic, you're going to see a lot of stuff. And um, I was dealing with these things for many, many years because I was editing videos back then on YouTube. And um, so I know that there are huge, huge issues with all of these other Bibles, even the new King James Bible, you should not uh, use it. Um, there's minor differences in, in doctrine, but when it comes to really fully understand the word of God, you need to have a good foundation. So get yourself a good Bible, which is a King James Bible, uh, the 1611 version. I mean, the, you know, revised 
1611 version so that you are well equipped to um, get back in the word which is uh, which is something that that God approves of um, here is for example let's go to this verse um, what I'm telling you I don't I don't want you to take my word for it who am I but also please I mean you love your religion well God is not impressed you know um, a lot of these or most or let's say all of these religions are man-made right they are not approved of God and I'm gonna show you why it doesn't it doesn't mean you have to leave immediately but you go in the word and as your faith is growing by hearing the word and um you know you, you can make the right decisions um first of all the bible says few there be that find it right now what a lot of people think they are christians when in fact they are not and I believe that no narcissist is a Christian. Uh, I don't care what he says. I don't care how he acts. Uh, I don't care how he fools people. But my Bible tells me that, that God hates narcissists. He hates psychopaths. He rejects them. And this is biblical. So is everybody who claims the Lord Jesus a Christian? Are they saved? Are they going to be with us in heaven? No. Here's why. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And you can follow along with me. So Matthew 7, 21 uh, through 23 in the King James Version reads, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, this verse shows you that not everybody who is doing all these great works and claiming the name of Jesus is saved. Um, Jesus even tells them or is going to tell them that he never knew them. It's not like, oh, they were saved and then they backslid and something happened and they committed sins or didn't repent of something and then the Lord rejects them. No, he tells them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now we're going to be looking at the verse, at the verses in John 6, 39 through 40 in the King James Version. What is the will of the Father? We just read in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, that not everyone who is claiming the name of Jesus and not everyone that is doing mighty and good, you know, wonderful works uh, or prophesying in, in his name is going to be with us in heaven. But the Lord is going to reject them saying, I never knew you. So it can't be that they lost their salvation, right? So, and it also says, ye that work iniquity, what does that mean? And what is the will of the Father that Jesus talks about when he says, uh, uh, many, uh, wait, ah, yeah, but he that, yeah, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the, into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So what is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is to be, is to be found not only in this passage, but in many other passages. If you know the Bible just a little bit, you know that God never gives you only one example or one confirmation of 
uh, crucial doctrines. So, because this is a very, very important doctrine of uh, what the will of the Father even is. Um, <clears throat> And this is what, what mainstream Christianity is so messed up about, okay? Um, so 639 through 40 in the King James Version in the book of John reads, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me that of all, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, Jesus Christ, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So did you get that? The will of the Father is, first of all, that each and one of us that the Father gave to Jesus and that came to Jesus... Um, that Jesus should lose not one of us, um, but that we will live again, even if we die, right? And this is the will of, the, of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And this is crucial. You see from this verse and from many other passages, I mean, Scripture cannot be broken, the Bible says, right? So if something sounds, you know, contradictory to you, um, let me assure you that with time, once you learn the Bible in context, I mean the full context of it all, once you understand what the fake gospel is and what the real gospel is and how the devil messed it all up, I mean, he can't, he can't corrupt the real Bible. He cannot because God promised he would keep it pure until the end, right? Not one jod or tittle is not, you know, nothing is going to be changed until the end. People are go always going to have the pure words of God because he's able to preserve it, right? And that's what he promised. So the will of the father is, that everyone who believeth on the Son may have everlasting life. False prophets are going to somehow subtly uh, come in and tell you that you need to do something else, something else than believe, okay? Something else. It's going to be works front-loaded, works back-loaded, like it could be, for instance, like in the Roman Catholic Church, where you need to clean up your act or many other cults as well say this. Um, well, God is not impressed. OK, God is not impressed by the numbers. He's not. He even tells us that few there be that find it. The narrow way has nothing to do with your Christian walk, with your lifestyle, with your repenting of sins. The narrow way and the, and the uh, straight gate that Jesus was talking about, and in fact, the whole Bible talks about only Jesus, all right? He is the one that you need to come to. He is the one that can forgive your sins because he's God, right? So um, the only thing that you must do to be saved is believe on the son and honor the son just as much as you honor the father meaning you understand that jesus christ is almighty god and we are going to deal with all of these topics just leave a comment down there and let me know if you're interested if you are struggling with this if you know you were taught differently or you think otherwise um, I'll, I'll be glad to make videos on these things because this is really crucial that you have the right Jesus, the one that is really capable to save you. And, uh, you know, because the Bible warns of many false Christs and another Jesus that is promoted in, in you know, professing Christianity. So. So this is crucial, right, because. Listen, it makes no sense. It, it just makes no sense for you to uh, think that you are going to be helped by Almighty God if you, if you refuse to, uh, 
you know, humble yourself, humble yourself. Um, it's very arrogant, arrogant uh, to believe that we could help God out when it comes to salvation. There's only one savior and his name is Jesus Christ. And there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, the Bible says. So if you have the right Jesus and you believe the right gospel and you take it with a childlike faith and you come to God with nothing, like the thief on the cross who had nothing to offer, you need to understand that we have nothing to offer to God. Yes, after salvation, after salvation, we have, we can do a lot of great, great things. We can save souls. We can preach the gospel, whether people want to hear it or not, because we are going to uh, give, an, give an account. I mean, we are going to answer to God uh, what we did with our life, how we used our talents, you know. And there's this famous parable also from uh, out of the Bible. Well, everything is going to be out of the Bible here. Um, but uh, this beautiful parable of the talents, right? So we need to look in, into these things uh, in order to, to understand uh, what we can do to help others get saved, go with us to heaven, and just simply, you know, let the narcs be the narcs. They're lost. This sounds harsh, harsh, this sounds brutal, but let's face it, these people, these people are just, you know, evil. They're, they're totally depraved. They're totally depraved. Take it, take it, you know, like believe it because that's what it is. If, if you have come to the end with a snark, you know how brutal the discard was and how, how, much how they really expose themselves uh, themselves as being t totally lacking of any empathy of any fairness of anything that you know you, you can't you can't even believe that this person could betray you like this if you went through you know what what most of us went through well this is the case with all of us we can't even believe that this person could betray us like this, like of all people, this is something very, very hard to wrap your head around. But um, the sooner you accept it for what it is, these people cannot change. They won't change. They love it like this. They are proud of their manipulation games and they, they feel entitled they don't believe in God. And I'm not impressed uh, how much they claim to believe in God. No. Uh, Judas Iscariot, Ju think of Judas Iscariot, right? He was a disciple. He was among the apostles. He was one of the 12. And he repented. He repented and even killed himself. Didn't he? What does the Bible say? What happened to Judas? Did his repentance help him to get forgiveness uh, to to uh, be forgiven or where is he is he in hell is he in heaven where's judas iscariot all of this is written in the in the pages of the book in the bible <laughs> 